It's between those, yeah. yeah. Four o'clock. Four o'clock Eastern. Anyway, um, we're going to get started hopefully quicker today than usual because Spencer has to do a lesson. Actually, it's in an hour and a half. Yeah. Oh, that's not too bad. Our typical deal. Usually yeah. we start around four today and, and and I leave, you know. Yeah. Well, I open the door at five, but then mm-hmm. I come back and you know, 5.30, I'm gone mm-hmm. for good. And so I can, can possibly continue a little past that since people don't really come here for this particular event until like right before. Anyway, I see no viewers yet. What? We've been on for 30 whole seconds. <laughs> so I can talk a little bit about the Michigan trip. It's, How'd that go? Wasn't Yeah, it was nice, but the negative side, okay, the trip, like once we were there, it was great. Got to see Ben's mom, got to see Iram. Went shopping. Hey, Lukey Pookie. Hey, Lukey Pookie. Oh, see, that, that nails it. We're, it's the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah, it is still afternoon. Yo, I was just talking a little bit about my Michigan trip. Yay, thank you for that tier one sub. Yep, I was just about to do that. And, um, but it's a long drive. I did it recently, right. so I know. And yeah. I feel like it's a bit dangerous to do that at night. And this particular trip, I caught Ben. He fell asleep at the well. Wow, really? Yeah, I yelled out. So then I was just terrified to sleep <laughs> yeah. after that mm-hmm. because so. Um, and he agreed that, and I tell, and so he agrees that we're not driving to Michigan anymore. From now on, it's going to need to be flying. It's just not safe. To be driving that many hours. I thought you were afraid of flying too, though. I am, but it's <laughs> safer than that. That's you absurd. need like a train or something. <laughs> Not quite Tony L. Not Almost. quite the first viewer. We got Lukey Pookie in here. Hey Tony, Tony, let me ask you: Did you come over from YouTube? Because that's kind of a YouTube thing first. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. But you were almost first. <laughs> well, think about it this way, Tony. First is the worst. <laughs> And second is the best, so just don't tell that to Lukey. Depending, depending <laughs> on what you're doing. <laughs> Yay, Mepex. Hey, happy holidays. Happy holidays to you too, Mepex. I was just talking a little bit about our Michigan trip, and the outcome of that is <laughs> is that, um, hey, MG Weirdo, that I've been agrees that we're, we have to fly from now on. This is really dangerous to try to drive such a long distance, especially in the middle of the night. So then... When we came back last night, um, I been I asked Ben to pull off because I can't even sleep when the car's moving. So I'm so scared that yeah. Ben's gonna. Yeah, so he had to pull off so I could sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even driving. Wow. No, it was miserable. It was horrible. It was like a horrible trip. Hey, but, Southern Chris. Um, hey, Justin. Southern Chris. Just um. Yeah, I never uh, had a problem <laughs> sleeping in the car, personally. Yeah. But um, it's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's not as comfortable. Yeah, I can sleep sometimes. Um, I believe that, Mepex. Yeah, I agree. And I caught Ben. He might have missed this. I hope he doesn't mind me telling that part of the story. That <laughs> He did doze off at the wheel, and I looked over right at that moment. And there were a couple other times where I think he may have, because he would cross the line and wake up like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Scottish Demon Goat. How's it it's going? Scottish Demon Goat. Anyway, he agrees that we should fly from now on, so no worries. Yes, yes. cheesy driver. He will. Ben, ben is home napping because we drove all night um, from Michigan. Hey, kangaroo. And he's going to stream, I think starting at 8, pretty sure. And he's going to be on Chess TV longer than usual tonight because I signed him up for s- some extra time. Yeah, the trip was really nice, kangaroo. The actual tra- you know, getting there wasn't great it was tiring but um we had fun in michigan we saw ben's mom and his daughter mm-hmm. and his brother mark who's on the stream sometimes 15 hour drive that seems a little long it's not quite mm-hmm. 15 hours right i agree it's not 15 <clears throat> maybe 13 or 12 or something. 12-ish i think it's 12-ish it's just too long i was mm-hmm. exhausted yeah, getting... it's literally half a day <laughs> I mean, and then my legs start aching. Like I had to get out and walk around, and then I don't like to use gas station bathrooms unless I have to. Mm-hmm. So we have to, you know, always trying to look for a, a rest area. 
but flying is much cheaper now because of covid there's you can get round trip flights for 50 bucks or less no, not for, not for this one. We looked at the price. And it was like three eighty round trip, what? but probably because it's like right here at Christmas. I guess yeah. And also it was last minute, but it's no, it's usually over two to go to Michigan. Andrew Fleming told me he got a thirty five dollar round trip ticket mm -hmm. to I don't know Philadelphia or something. Yeah, you can get deals. Yeah, and they actually love to give deals to Philly for certain. I don't know why they're like certain. Maybe they got a hub there. Certain <laughs> routes, yeah, certain routes. Different airlines like, but no, right right now going to Michigan would have been expensive, but. Um, much safer. That's not exactly an ethical cheesy driver. <laughs> but, well. Find a hotel bad. and use their lobby bathroom. <laughs> that is a good trick, though. Yeah, that, might, that is a good trick. Looks like you got a challenge here, or at least yeah, one. Yeah, let's get that going. Um, oh, I, oh, look, I've ended in a game. That's because I was talking to the cleaning lady. <laughs> Who needs that game? I didn't mean to. Well, I and I lost a whole bunch of games in the car because I kept losing my internet. It was tough. Right, the Scottish Demon Goat. Hey, Scottish Demon Goat. All right, so where's, let's see. Well, you got to X out of that game or else it'll mess it up. Mm hmm Oh, yeah. Do that. Classicchess.com. Mm-hmm. This is Spencer. Go, Spencer. Why is it not ethical? Because you should only use an establishment's restroom when you're participating in whatever the establishment provides. Generally. I would, a cheesy driver, I would have no problem using that restroom. Oh, obviously all. not. All right, at obviously all. not. <laughs> I would do it in, yeah. Well, what if somebody came into the chess club, used the bathroom, and left? I'm sure it's happened. And, yeah, and if yeah, somebody probably. asked me to use it, I would say, yeah, right, of I course. wouldn't say they have to buy anything. No. But, it, it, you know, that's not necessarily correct business practice. Uh, I think it's correct. How's it going, Jitterbug? I think she should have a friendly, welcoming attitude. Oh, I'm, I'm saying from their point of view, not ours. Mm -hmm. You know, they shouldn't be doing that, really. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that we should be strict about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, restrooms are for customers only, exactly. <laughs> That's usually how it is. Looks like you got a little closed cattle in here. Yeah, I mean, I definitely they should get priority. Let's see, let's do that. <laughs> Guys are a bunch of rule followers. What? I would never follow a rule. God damn. I never wear my seatbelt. You know, some rules do need to be followed, though. <laughs> That's true. But you know, you gotta know when to break some rules. You gotta know when to hold them, and know when to fold them. See, that's what I'm saying. I went with kangaroo. I just think that, personally, the kind of business I want to have is one in which someone says, "Oh, let's go in here," but they'll let us use their bathroom, and I feel like, yeah, yeah, rather you, you come in. Why not have them come in there? You want to, you know, kumbaya. Take a, <laughs> what do you want them to do? Take a dump on the hot, on the. Sidewalk. I mean, what do you want people to do? I don't want anybody to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to run a business. That's all. <laughs> trying to live your life. <laughs> they can do whatever they want. If they're all dumping outside, then that's on them. You know? <laughs> well, this song's okay, Kangaroo. But it's pretty good. I guess good is the correct adjective. It's a good song. Which song are you guys talking about? No one to hold them, no one to fold them. Oh. Uh, yeah. R.I.P. Kenny Rogers. Loved him. <laughs> yeah, there was also a, a, a baseball pitcher named Kenny Rogers, and his nickname was The Gambler because of the other Kenny Rogers. Mm. <laughs> this was like kind of a joke. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like a joke. Yeah. But it was real life. It happened. Mm -hmm. I remember because the pitcher pitched for the Tigers, actually, near the end of his career. Mm -hmm. Or sort of, you know, the twilight of his career. Yeah, no pooping in the, in the parking lot is That's true. exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. You should poop where it's more degradable, like in, in the grass. <laughs> That's way better. Uh, yeah. I guess I can't try this. 
poke the bear. Um, now, I'm sure that sometime in life, many of you have been forced, you know, to go outside on occasion. <laughs> and that is never fun when that occurs. That's true. So I'm just going to have. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm sure. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Nobody wants to just have to go outside. Right. Like a dog? Yeah, like a common dog. That's it. Now let me see what I'm going to do with this bishop. Karen's accent seems more noticeable. Maybe because she's so sleepy. I've been up all night. It was a terrible driving. From <laughs> scared I was going to die. You drove all night. <laughs> I don't know that song very well. <laughs> the worst situation. I have two potty stories. Potty stories. I wonder if I should tell them. Well, it is technically illegal, so maybe not. <laughs> What's illegal? Uh, urinating and defecating out outdoors. Um, well, I guess it depends where, but that's generally. Illegal. But if but if you can't hold it in your body, right? What are you gonna do? <laughs> they can't make you hold it in your body. I don't know exactly what the law <laughs> says, but I, I agree with you in principle. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I need to stop talking so much. I was like, mm -hmm. are you talking about poops? <laughs> 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 If a bear doesn't know it, that's what I'm saying. Now, let's see which piece. Yes, this one. Am I going to get mated? Let me make sure. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, yeah, I was in France one time. Oh, that will say you should have planned ahead. I guess. Hey, no, a Frenchman. Okay, this I have a French story. I did act like a Frenchman, although I don't Retreated. know. <laughs> oh, is that what he meant? I don't know, actually. <laughs> I don't know what he meant by that. So, hey, C.L. Smith. So, yeah, when I was in France a few years ago, I used to be an avid runner, and I still have aspirations to return to that one day. <laughs> but anyway... I was out for a run. I was in southern France. And I was out on some golf course. It's like on, on the Mediterranean, like Grotte or Wa. I can't even remember the name of the place. Anyway, it doesn't matter that much. Small place. And I had this overwhelming urge to go to the bathroom. You're going to lose on time here. Number Fine. two. What's going on? And, I mean, anybody that's ever run a lot understands that, you know. If you run for a long time, <laughs> then you couldn't really have planned ahead that well. Oh no, so, no, that's not true. Sometimes you can just be out on a run and you know, you got to go. You okay. just got to go. And it doesn't have anything to do with planning at all. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I had to go and I couldn't find a place cuz it was out and there were no buildings anywhere. It was kind of a golf course, etc. And so I had to go outside in the bushes in France. And I was thinking, God, I hope nobody sees me and I get in trouble. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had to go. What are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? Seemed to work out. I like how your opponent went for the self-fork. The lesser-known tactic. The self-fork. Mm-hmm. Da -da 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 -da. x clan. Oh, I can't do Keep that. trying. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Maybe not. laughs> oh, I don't see pins worth crap. That's why he self-forked, because of the pin. He's like, that'll show her. She can't take nothing now. Mm -hmm. -ha -ha. Except now she can take everything. <laughs> yeah, but I have, a, I have sli only slightly more time. I had to tell my story. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying, me, Pex. Not run you, running right. d causes some loose stools sometime. Um, yeah, you should just be running. You should always run towards a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that, and then you have no problem. I also, one time, had uh, to go when I lived in Boston. I like how you knew this would happen, and you're pre-moving this. Very yeah. nice. <laughs> I lived in Boston, like right over by the Charles River. Not, I lived almost on the near MIT, but like on the other side of the river. Anyway, used to run a loop around the river there. I had to go 
they had the the bathroom locked one time. It's like, what is going on? Mm-hmm. There are so many runners and walkers in Boston. It was absurd. I had to go in the bushes in that stinking park. And that was just not right in life to have to do that. But I had to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nobody you, saw me. You messed with the fro, you got to go. I don't think anybody saw me. To be honest. So what is the point of the opponent playing this position? Down a queen in two pieces. He has five seconds left. Like the only way he can win is if you have a stroke. Mm-hmm. Well. Like literally every legal move in every position will win. <laughs> There's no way you can't win. Good game. GG the suspenser. Well, you know, sometimes people blunder. And so I think. You could blunder everything and you'd win. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You can't blunder the game away when he has five seconds and you're up three pieces, one of them being a queen. It's impossible to blunder mm-hmm. it away. I, I endorse... Even if he took all your pieces, he wouldn't have enough time to win because he only has five seconds. I endorse his right to not resign. Oh, he, of course he has the right to not resign. I just wonder what the purpose is, <laughs> is all. You have the right to complain. Yeah, I have the right... Exactly. I have the right to complain. I played quickly and accurately when talking about bathrooms. Those true. Those two stories in life were so tr- traumatic for me to have to go to the bathroom outside and with no toilet paper. Horrible, horrible situation in life. But I got through it and I didn't get ar- arrested. So here your opponent's playing like a Catalan. But in the Catalan, they don't usually play knight c3. The reason is if you take this pawn, which you should, then it's hard for their queen to go take it because their knight's blocking them. Yeah. They could play queen here takes... But then they can't get back to C2 because their knight's in the way. So if your opponent's playing a Catalan and they play knight C3, you should play D takes C. Okay. I'll try to remember that. I don't play against Catalan right. a lot. I mean, this isn't even a proper Catalan, but mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and the reason that you want to take when they play the Catalan specifically is because they don't play bishop takes. They play bishop G2. They can't play bishop takes C4. They play bishop G2. So it makes a lot of sense to take... Oh, Even in the main line of the catalog. You're saying because they're going to fe- obviously going to feed Cairo. Right, so they're not going to play bishop takes c4, exactly. Okay. Like, here's the main line, just to compare. Just for fun. DC is the most common. I've played, I played this against Peter Bariolis, and I was winning and lost. Mm. Um, not that that says anything about the opening, but this is just the, the most common move. Not that you have to do this. You could set up the way you did in the game, like a closed Catalan. I think that's... If you're trying to win, this might even be a better way to try to win. Because there's just less theory. Mm. So your opponent won't play 20 moves, you know, Yeah. perfectly. Not that your opponents usually do that anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. Taking is probably wrong, but it might not be because... You know, I'd still be afraid of them, of you, of you taking. This is obviously right, frankly. These were all, oh. <laughs> These were all, I did that last time too. Yeah, they need to do this space. The button needs to be bigger, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Especially this button that's the most common button. Well, they have some real estate there in the middle that's not used. Yeah. So they could space yes. the buttons out. Hey, I'm going to grab a tissue. I'll be right back. Okay. See, I agree with you. I yeah, we're in agreement here. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm back. So now you're, uh, you, I mean, you're definitely better here because knight e5 f3 is not particularly coherent plan. And mm-hmm. then this moves, loses a pawn for nothing. I mean, you're not even threatening this, so he didn't have to move his knight. But if he did want to move his knight, I would go here. Mm-hmm. This move just hangs a pawn for nothing. Now you're winning. Right, so he took, obviously, the wrong bishop because you're doing this, forking. Mm-hmm. He needs to take the normal bishop to take, just recapture like normal. Then you'd go here, I guess. Mm-hmm. Then after he moves his rook back, you know, you, you've made all normal moves. And he, he's got a backwards pawn. Uh, he, you know, his pieces aren't particularly active in this. Like, you have a great pawn structure for his pieces. Mm-hmm. And he just has... A backwards pawn, weak e3, weak e5, e4 even. And you have no problem. You're just pristine, beautiful position. 
easy to play too. Mm -hmm. So black's obviously better, frankly. But here, now you're just obviously winning, frankly. He tried his best here to do a one move threat. I like it. Yeah, and then I don't think I have any complaints about any of the moves you played the whole game, actually. Oh, here's the one complaint about any move. Uh, so you played, like, perfect, actually. But this is the only complaint you should have taken is free knight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, you did this and uh, only won a queen instead of a queen and a piece. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But okay, then it's, like I said. Well, if I took the knight, then mm -hmm. the queen couldn't... Then... Queen would then take the rook. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so then you want a queen and a knight for a rook. Yeah. Here okay. you only want a queen for a rook. Cause yeah. Because you took and then he... Yeah, Actually, I didn't Actually, no, that. no, you did take this back. So it's the same. I was wrong, because you took the knight too. Oh, yeah, I forgot I did So that. it is the same, yeah. It's the same. I was just, yeah, I was just... Yeah, yeah, I just got I knew that there. I was going to happen, that the f file was going to right. happen. Right, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, G6 versus yeah, side F6. F3 was very anti positional because he can never exactly me pecs. He can never play, uh, he can never play, um, E4. So, like, if you play F3, you're committed to E4, but he can never play E4. It's pinned and you're controlling it a lot. And also, if he does play it, then this is weak and so on. But you're right, uh, CL Smith, that the most precise move is pawn takes. That wins the absolute most material, yeah. You take the queen, and now two things are hanging too. Mm -hmm. So that is the most the way to win the absolute most material. Not that uh, it matters at all, <laughs> but mm -hmm. might as well mm -hmm. be correct. Could you comment on g6 first, knight f6 as defenses? You mean in this position here? I thought g6 was obviously better, but knight f6 looks good too, I guess. But yeah, I think g6 is clearly the right move. Now the dude has four things hanging. I mean, can't complain about that, right? I don't complain when four of my opponent's pieces are hanging. I think that's the right move. But yeah. I mean, knight of six probably wins too because it's still a fork, so. Yeah. So what did you think? You want to get started on the game? I uh, mean, you know, on the um, book, rather? Let's see. It's 423. Um... It's a little earlier than usual, but like you said, uh, like you said earlier, you know, I got the I got the lesson. Mm -hmm. I think I could. We can play one more game. All right. Do one more, Especially because it's a three minute. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. But then I, th I think yeah, after that we should because then it'll, that'll give us about an hour for the lesson. All right. Um, time for the more nun puns. <laughs> Takes none to know none. Where's Nura no nun? It's a couple <laughs> <laughs> quick puns for you. No, oh, GG, the suspenser, I forgot to say. But now, the last few games I've had with the suspenser have actually been very competitive. Yes. In fact, he won one of them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Kangaroo's booing my puns. Sad. <laughs> Sad, <laughs> but fair. Yeah. I don't really know if the suspenser has to do that. Just... Now you're doing it. Going to get on in there. <laughs> hey, Blue Alphys. None is the loneliest number. That was two because I said number. <laughs> Sneak it in there. <laughs> Proud of yourself, huh? Yes, <laughs> quite. Um. Spencer, would you say that playing a lot of bullet is bad for classical skills? I don't really think it can negatively affect you to play bullet chess as long as you can slow down during your game. And realize that you're playing a slow game and not a bullet game. But generally, playing chess is good for your chess, not bad. If it's free, it's for me. But it's certainly not an efficient way to get better at chess. I think Jitterbug Flapping was proud of you playing Knight H6 because he typed yay in the chat here, in the chess.com chat. Yeah. The game chat.
what's the most efficient way to get better at chess? Well, first, you should uh, solve tactical puzzles every day. And you should also play slow games and analyze them with the chess engine. If you do both of those activities every day, you're almost guaranteed to improve at chess. Until you've reached your peak, I guess. At some point, you just can't improve anymore. Or you might have to do something more difficult than what I mentioned, at least. Mm -hmm. You got it, hop on the blender bus. <laughs> That's funny, because it's like the the gun blender bus, mm -hmm. but it, he's it's like a bus of blunders, too. I like it. But... I'm a good I'm a big fan of of good puns and bad puns and average puns <laughs> just saying oh how did it do? I didn't make a noise you how did. long how long was it my turn I didn't even just know it three seconds or, or five oh, seconds five point one so seconds. I hate it when it does that but I heard the noise I didn't hear it yeah uh What should we do? I stopped paying attention. Good, good. I feel like I've plateaued by just playing. I can't get over 1100 in Rapid. Uh, I don't think if you're 1100 in Rapid that you need to focus at all on openings. You know, or hardly at all. Unless you're just playing totally ridiculously in the opening. I mean, I guess I'd have to see. But uh, you can... Yeah, you need to do more tactics, right? And you need to be efficient w when you're solving them. And yeah, you have to also analyze. In fact, PPTRS is, is correct there. Analyzing your games is very important because you have to... Uh, like, that's a, a way that you can learn the opening. Like, you play it, a game of chess, then you analyze the opening so you can play better, the, the opening better that in that way and improve in the opening and not specifically target the opening with your studying. Yeah. Right, yeah, you have to, you play a lot of fried liver uh, at, at the low level, Matthew. Oh, so goodness. that's something that you would have to study in order to survive. Uh, Missed a little tactic there, huh? Yeah. Do VIPs watch ads? I think VIPs watch extra ads. I totally forgot today was Tuesday. Well, mm. that's on you, buddy. <laughs> Wait, what, what about Tuesday? Just that he forgot today was Tuesday. Mm. That's all. Yeah, openings at a low level, you don't have to study too much, right? Well, that's another way to do it. Just avoid the fried liver by not playing E4. Or or E5, I guess, with black. Don't forget some pre-moves that when you get the chance. Mm -hmm. Play the Traxler and have fun. The Traxler is fun until you lose. And you're like, that's not fun. <laughs> I like winning. I mean, pre-move necessary. Now you're getting it. Great. Go, Karen. Nice. Genius stuff there. Genius pre-moving. Keep it going. Yes! Great oh, pre-moving. <laughs> Great stuff. I couldn't have done it better myself. I could have, but <laughs> that was great stuff. GG Jitterbug. I love how you noticed what he was doing and stopped your pre-move. I did, because I was That's about to really do it. queen over there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Even stronger players don't do that. They just, like, pre-move too much, and then, oops, my opponent's queening now, you know? <laughs> that was really good. Yay. And you stopped at the perfect time, right when mm -hmm. he played h6, and then mm -hmm. you took it. Great stuff. Yay. Really good. Pre and you didn't over pre-move? Pre-moving's hard. You have to do just the right amount. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, stopping to take H6 was genius stuff. Very alert. Very alert stuff. 
And you played all this theory too? This is exactly the time to play Knight H6. I know, I still need to study yeah, that it was right. what I just did takes, it because I know that... What would you do? What would you take? No. Oh, no? No, intermezzo. What? Taking here loses to a different move. Oh, well, see, I told you I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be moving. Well, I knew. That's why I asked. <laughs> <laughs> this is hanging, and the rook is trapped. Oh, okay, so what am I? I was supposed to take yeah. on B2. Now he could go here to save his rook, but then you take here. Oh. And he's free pawn, and then all these pawns are hanging. Oh, you did show me that before yeah. I forgot. All right. Well, that takes me to one more step exactly. further. Exactly. Now, bishop d3, mm -hmm. I don't actually know that move. I only know taking, which loses, and b4, which is the move. Bishop d3, I would assume that this is the correct move. Because it controls b3, which is nice because he played a3. Mm -hmm. And it uh, with a tempo, of course. But yeah, you like to play c4 if they've played a3, so he's enticing you to do that, actually. Yeah, I thought about doing it. Usually it's wrong. Yeah, just wasn't sure. Uh, this move, okay, bishop d7, when you're playing with knight h6 variation, mm -hmm. you typically don't want to play bishop d7 if you don't have to. I was worried if I didn't that I was going to go target the d4 pawn, that they would get that bishop check. b5 check. That's like the normal main line, right? It's so I was bishop worried d7. about this, so that was the only reason mm -hmm. why I went bishop b7, it's because I knew No, I, I saw it because when pawn. you played here and they didn't, do anything about it, you won the pawn, which is correct. Right. The only reason why with knight h6 it's not usually correct is that you like to play knight f5. Yeah. Sometimes they'll take. Yeah. And then you like to play e takes and bishop e6. Mm -hmm. So if you've already played bishop e7, it'll cost you a tempo. If you play bishop d7, then oh, bishop yeah, e6. You're right. Yeah, and I was actually planning on putting my bishop where you're talking about mm -hmm. support both pawns. Exactly. That's the best square in that structure mm -hmm. for sure. And keep them from pushing their e-pawn. Yes, absolutely. Abs it stops that break. Right. Yeah. Hey, Cheesy Driver. Hey, PPRTS1. Well, we're we're about to do um, a lesson after this, but I can play after the stream. I'll play some more people. Spencer has to go teach somebody in an hour, so we only have Spencer one more hour, and then we're on our own. This move is extremely risky. I thought I it lost. I I thought because they were going to go bishop e3. But you're, it actually doesn't lose. I think you're okay I here. saw that. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. But I panicked when I saw yes. it. I was like, oh, Me no. Me too. I was like, oh. But then I saw the other move. Mm -hmm. But then I, that's pretty sharp I, today, huh? Pretty sharp today. <laughs> so that's why I went ahead and brought the bishop back, which I know is like a little passive, but I was worried my queen might have to get That's smart. Sleep. No, this is correct. Yeah. Okay. So that's just, just correct. Like, yeah. yeah. Because I noticed it, and I was like, that's not good. This move's like the strangest move of the game, I guess. <laughs> I didn't understand that at all. Mm. But I don't know. Maybe he wanted to push his f pawn but, and get out of the pin, but even still, queen g1 strong. So I didn't understand queen mm. f1. Is knight f5 g4 still theory? Well, bishop d3 is not theory, so they're already out of theory. I would play c4. or But like you're saying, if knight f5 g4 is annoying, so if you want to play knight f5... Like, I would go here, and then I'd go here. And then if they do this, I can play knight h4 now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they won't play g4. Hey, Care K27. Yes, we are back in Atlanta. I hardly slept last night. Ben's napping right now. We drove back last night. Lots of um, closed roads. They closed 75 more than one in one Dang. place. It wasn't because of Iraq. It was weird. So, yeah, bishop e3 is a good move because he trapped you with this mm -hmm. little tactical trick he got you. That was yeah, a nice tactic. I know. I didn't see that. That was nice. After here, I guess you're significantly better, if not winning. Yeah. I should have done that. I didn't see the little trick. Right. Exactly. Yeah, because now it's check. And now you're lost. Mm -hmm. And then somehow it was just not clear in time pressure yeah okay i think some of these were pre-moves even yeah it was already getting down to pre-move but it's already like kind of tough to win this especially in a blitz game because there aren't a lot of pawns on the board mm -hmm. so he's gonna have to have good technique even in the best scenario this isn't a very easy win but yeah now it's just it's all pre-moves so he just tried to gain time with this yeah, and then this was the best moment. Yes, X clam. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, Jitterbug, you gotta be a little sneakier. You gotta like go here and here, and then move your knight, 
and then go here later when she's not looking. That's how you do it. If you just go here, 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 you know, anybody would, Helen Keller would notice you're doing this, you know? <laughs> He's playing every one move, like, I'm going to take then. <laughs> But if you move your knight around in a circle, and then she's like, oh, no, he's going to check me. He's going to take this, you know? And then when she's not looking, then age six. That's how you do it. Ignorant says, hair looks good. I assume you <laughs> mean Spencer's. I guess you could mean mine. Both our hairs are great. <laughs> I got mine trimmed, but it's really not a huge difference like Spencer's is. It was F4, oh, both of us. Well, thank you. We did both get haircuts, and then you got his color, obviously. I mean, who cares about F4? Like... I mean, F4 looks good. Actually, that does seem like the best move. Seems like I checked yeah. it or something. But, yeah, it. obviously, they're just pre-moving here, so the moves can't be oh, criticized yeah, yeah. too much. Okay. Yeah, we won. And then you won on time. Good mm -hmm. game. Good game. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely played well both games, I would say. Mm-hmm. But, all right, I guess we're on to Dr. John Nunn. Dr. Nunn. <laughs> Thank you, this is Spencer. And Nunn is a doctor. I didn't just say that, mm -hmm. you know, for fun. Sort of like uh, Jill Biden. Jill mm -hmm. Biden, yes. Dr. Jill Biden. Mm -hmm. I believe. <laughs> that could be wrong. It is doctor. No, there was a big controversy in the news. You didn't hear? No. no. Oh, yeah. I can't remember now exactly what it was. They were wanting her to not use her title. What, does anybody remember? <laughs> Too much of a doctor. Can't no, it was like a big thing. It was like a headline. I don't remember now what it was. So, I don't know. People were saying she shouldn't use her title for some reason. No, show her. I don't quite get it. It was pretty strange. I mean, my I have... Um, yeah, you thought he no, was referencing yeah, I, I that contract. Yeah, I thought so too. I just knew that she was a doctor. Well, <laughs> then that means that, that all of the guys, including my brother and sister-in-law... Uh, shouldn't use their their titles because right. they have PhDs. That's standard in academe. I mean, none is not a medical doctor. Why see? And, and it says doctor. Right. Don Why are we singling <laughs> out Jill Biden? That's just dumb. Oh, that was Tucker Carlson. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, just some idiot. Okay. I mean, obviously he says an idiotic thing. Oh, he's a he's a moron. I did, I forgot it was him. <laughs> I got I already got I did get mad at the time. I said, oh, I can't stand that guy. And I forgot it was him. You know, getting. This is, come, this comes with getting Maybe if cold. she wore more bow ties, he would respect that. <laughs> you know, because um, he like he used to wear a bow tie all the time. Oh yeah, I remember that. Not anymore though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the, I mean, there are several types of doctors, right? It's just you know, usually you're referring to a medical doctor generally, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah, also like for example, Lasker was a doctor. You know, mm -hmm. Emmanuel Lasker, I think, was a dog, I'm pretty sure. He was a physician, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Oh, I thought he was, like, a mathematician. Oh, I could But be it might wrong, have been yeah. physics, like there was, you said. There yeah. was one of them that was a medical doctor, but I probably had it wrong. Also, I think even maybe Botvinnik. Okay. Maybe Botvinnik. Yeah. <laughs> hey, sarcastic, sarcastic guillotine. All right, so let's look at this section it's again bishop takes h7 sacrifice part two okay cool and just for those that are just now joining in it's um a book by john nunn that we're going through it's kind of like a little online study group called understanding chess middle games yeah huh? this will be win win guac guac mm -hmm. i don't know win <laughs> against Kanep. who i also don't know who that is conti mansisk 2010 Let's see who wins. My mm -hmm. guess will be none. Hey, while you do that, I'm going to refresh this. It's actually another three. <laughs> should be paying attention instead of making jokes. All right. He played C3. All right, I did it. Oh, look, it's transposed to a Lundo. Oh, Lasker was a math PhD. Okay. I got to mix up with somebody. This is like exactly what Karen would play. Look at this. This looks like Karen everyone. Mm-hmm. That does look like... Half your opponents mm -hmm. go here. I don't know why. But since Knep is a good player, he played that. Mm -hmm. Now, you know the move Magnus would play here? Probably bishop Usually. b5. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. He liked to play bishop b5. But bishop d3 is the main move, which is what uh, Win plays. Playing for the win, I guess. 
Queen e7, that's an unusual move. I would even say that's wrong, probably, though none doesn't mention. But b6 is the move, right? Yeah, b6. Well, there are some games with queen e7. b6, bishop, b7, easy. Easy peasy. Here's a line that I know. I played this against Robin Van Kampen. Mm -hmm. I, I remember you talked with the books this? game. Yeah, yeah. We talked about that game before, but it I was like this. I don't recall the game that well. So. And I played here, X clam. Yeah. And then there. So I maneuvered my knight all the way around town so oh, I, I could go to yeah. e4. Oh, yeah. And bishop e7, x clam. Mm -hmm. And then after the game, he's like, wow, you're teaching me a lot about these maneuvers in London. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yep, I know how to play it. So that's like the main line. Now, I should mention here, white has a, a ton of options. Queen f3 is not, like, is the main move. But queen b1 is also a move that you might have to know. Well, I think Karyakin may be lost with white or something. Was it Adams Karyakin? There's some game with queen b1. Hmm. Maybe Karyakin is white. Hey, Atomic Morphe. Thank you for the seven centidues. What color will Spencer be for Christmas? Her. <laughs> Definitely. I think, yeah. I'm not going to change it this week. Yeah. How's it going, the Master John? Master LCTTV. John. Hadn't seen you in a while, Master John. Good to see you. 97 Dubious. A definite error. Black is about to fall in one of the most subtle opening traps known. I actually do know this trap. There's some queen h5 or something. Let's see how it goes. I forgot. Mm -hmm. Knight takes d7. Bishop takes d7, question mark. Objectively speaking, queen takes is better, but obviously it looks weird, right? Uh, the same continuation in the game. Bishop takes d6, dubious. Should play queen c2, but this is how the game goes, is, is bishop takes. Okay. It, but with the bishop here, you know. But now it doesn't work. This doesn't win for white. Like this. Yeah, queen h5. Knight e4. This only leads to a draw after g6. Queen e7. Oh, I saw this trap one time. Yeah. There, and did you show it to me? Or did it? Probably, either you showed it maybe. to me or I saw it in a Rosen video. Probably Rosen, I guess. Because I, 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 I don't remember if. Okay, I know, think I did see that. I did that. see that in a Rosen video. Anyway, keep going. So, but it's okay here because mm -hmm. the, he didn't play bishop takes. He plays queen takes in this variation. And so white's not winning there. Mm -hmm. And so white actually shouldn't play this tactical trick. He should play queen c2 and white's better. But the way the game went, he did play bishop takes. And now after all of these moves, white is winning. It is amazing that this is correct, since white appears to lack any supporting piece for his attack. However, the knight can reach g5 with gain of tempo, and white's threats are enough to tie black down and give white enough time to bring in his reserves. Mm -hmm. Nice pin. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was that Rosen video. Um, the burn mark is still on his head, says Barely, Carson. though. It's faded <sighs> quite a lot. Barely a burn mark. Mm -hmm. Queen c4. Now if we play that same variation before, but the bishop was here, that we looked at, like mm -hmm. this, the problem is the bishop's hanging. And so white will just end up a pawn up, I guess. Seven to six, yeah. And winning. Just winning. Even as a threat. Mm-hmm. And then he can run away when you stop that threat. This is why black's worse with the bishop on d7. And why here bishop takes d7 is, is a mistake. The queen takes is not losing. So he didn't play g6. Because he still would lose material. Then. So he plays queen c4 to maintain extra material. Knight g5 threatening mate in one. Difficult to defend. He has to just run away, train, never coming back, which is what he does. Queen d3, this is a defense that we talked about when we talked about Greek gift sacrificing, putting a diagonal piece here. Mm -hmm. But we can just block him. Yeah, remember that. Yeah. So he plays this. Oh, you've seen Komsky play that atomic morphe? I believe it. Komsky plays the, uh, the London a lot. Mm-hmm. And you'll get this trap occasionally, I suppose. This is the best move. But h4 is also strong. 
knight e5, check, queenside castle, This left white a pawn up with a continuing attack and a dangerous pass to h-pawn in the game Prai against Svetushkin, which we actually looked at a Svetushkin game earlier, you know, in the book. Mm -hmm. So h4 is winning. Queen h5 is even better, according to none. Rook d1 x-clam. Why not king c2 to prevent queen takes Then b2? queen a4 check, I think. You mean here. It would be this, and then t takes, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that, actually, when I was looking at the variation, but I, I figured that out. Yeah. King d2 avoids the check. So queen h5 check. Uh, no, obviously Magnus has popularized the London. Mm -hmm. And also Boris Grachev, too. But yeah, I guess the three of them were the, the three biggest London practitioners who played it more than a couple times, you know. This is too sharp for you, PP or TS1. <laughs> well, it has to be because otherwise white's a piece down for nothing, right? So mm -hmm. you'd, you'd rather hope it's sharp. And in fact, it's just good for white, so. Rook d1 is the most accurate continuation of the attack, ruling out the possibility of queen d3. Here too, black is helpless against the rather slow threats of h4, rook h3, or even f4, rook f1 to f3 are the ideas. d4 looks pretty desperate, don't you think? Like, this, my opponent's controlling this square more than anything, but got to get something going. Mm -hmm. b5, h4, or queen takes a2, castling kingside. Dead lost for black, both of those. Mm -hmm. No, this is this is not the Konsky Shanklin game. This is who is it? Win Nagak. I would just call Wak. him Win. Win. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce the second part of his name. And then Knep. Knep. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that is either. I've popularized the London MG weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Badur plays Knight C three, so that's not exactly the same as a London. Mm -hmm. People call it the Jobava London. You know, I would just call it the Joe Bava. It's just because this bishop f4 later, it's the London. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Hmm. What about d5? Do you mean d4? Because this is d5, the suspenser. That's the d5 square. And he played d4. Check. And this. We already discussed that. I like how he's just ignoring this. He's like, whatever. I don't care about that. Pretty funny. Queen d5. At this point, white could have won simply by e4, followed by rook h3. Instead, he castled question mark, queen f5, and then won a little bit of material back. Which still gave him a large endgame advantage which white did eventually win, but only after allowing black a, a drawing possibility. And then he gives the moves, but and he also gives like some uh, symbols, but no annotation. Interesting. Let's see what he's talking about. He says Rick F three question mark. Then rook f e three question mark. Then rook f three again, not question mark. Obviously, he's not. This isn't great technique. He played rook f three, rook back, rook back, and lost his pawn. Yeah. And he's gonna lose pawns now. Uh, anyways, rook f three. Now knight takes d four is double question mark. He just missed this. That wins two pieces for a rook with 96, I guess, which is what he played, yeah. So that was a huge blunder. He was looking at this, which is okay, I guess. How is that okay? King up, I guess, yeah. But he, he just missed this move because it, it, it's move 37. Mm -hmm. So it's just a big blunder. 
And now white's technically winning. Yeah, so the end of the game is not very instructive. White had bad technique, and then black made a one-move blunder. But instead of white going for this endgame after queen d5, where he traded queens and then won the rook, and then it was two pieces for a rook and some pawns, mm -hmm. he should just play e4, rook h3, and attack in the style of the position, you know, in the spirit of the position here. Yeah. So, uh, somewhat good game, though. <laughs> you know, can't be too nitpicky. It's tough. Even though he messed it up, he still ended up winning. That's all that matters. He lived up to his name. <laughs> hey, War Games, how's it going? And then let me see. Hey, I want to tell... Uh, there, there's still one more example in this section? Yes. Okay, after that, then I'm going to take a tiny break just so I want to talk about something. Okay. So I want to tell you something, too. No big deal, just before I forget. Hey, Sapient. Hey, Sapient oct Octopus. Puss. Yeah. <laughs> it's a neon green, so it's hard Classic to see. Classic neon green. Which you I guess it's weird because um, every browser gen generates different colors. Yes, and I noticed that. So unless you set your own color, then you're always right. that color. So. Like my color is like bright green, but not neon green. It's like grass green. Oh, so you did set your own color? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I need to do that for I you. thought you did it too. It was, I talked about it. I thought it was red. Oh, did I? Every time I... Oh, maybe not. I don't know if I ever did. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> All right, so he says the bishop sacrifice on h7 doesn't have to be followed by knight g5 check. Another common motivation is to gain time to double major pieces on the h file. Here's the game Smirin against Voloshin from 2003 slash 4. Mm -hmm. It was a long game. It took like two years to complete it. Yeah, you can... Sapient... I'm going to just call you... Say, or I'm going to call you Octopus because that's quicker but you can set your own default color i just don't remember how and then everybody everywhere always sees you that color otherwise it's just kind of randomly generated for each person <laughs> so it's just my pro i can't see the neon green for some reason and you're not the only neon one this is very similar to a game we saw where smear had black and the guys and it was cry Veruchko sacrificed a pawn here i don't know if you remember that Mm. It was like it was something like this. I don't know if he played b5 already. And then Kryveruchko sacrificed this pawn, and then he played attacking the queen the whole time. I don't, I don't think I remember. I don't know. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't play d6 here. I don't know if he had b5 already. I forgot the exact position, but it's very similar to that. Here, black plays b4, question mark. Mm. None says that d6 is more solid. Playing b4 gives white the chance to activate his a1 rook by playing a3 after he moves his knight. Yeah. Which he did. And then there it is. Yeah, this trade is not generally good for black, right? Trading the b pawn for the a pawn. That's not usually what you want to do. And now the rook is really good and you have an isolated a pawn. Mm -hmm. So... Hey, yeah. hiking poet. Better late than never. Good to see you. That's true. So is it? It's just. Are there any other reasons that that that's bad? Uh, and obviously, an isolated pawn. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if there were any other things. Well, yeah. I mean, your B pawn is like good at controlling, for example, C four. Right, and now I can control. I can put my pieces on C four where I otherwise wouldn't. Oh, okay. Yes. And that's why, like my dad likes to say, when the, your opponent has the structure, he likes to play A four, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you heard my dad say that when yeah. he 6b5. It's because he wants to control c4. He wants to put it like his knight there or something. And when you play b4 unprovoked, you're giving away the white squares. And also because I didn't play a4, as John, John Nunn mentions, I can play a3 because I didn't play a4 yet. So it's even worse to play a4 without, um, to play b4 without a4. Okay. <clears throat> Hey, Quinn, how's it going? Interesting maneuver. Looks like a knight. <laughs> so, he castles question mark. Rook c8 is better, although white retains a positional advantage due to the weak a pawn, as we mentioned earlier. 
Instead, he castles, question mark. Um, you're right, Scottish Demon Goat. And also, I mean, he already played b5, so your your trademark move is, is no longer available. Uh, you triple forked your opponent today, Hiking Poet? That's always fun. I've quadruple forked before. Yeah? I quadruple forked Indo Queen. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I played her on her stream. Oh, once. cool. I forked her king, queen, and both rooks. <laughs> forked everybody. Are you there in Do? Show yourself. <laughs> After that embarrassing story, <laughs> now you have to show yourself. Well, she, she'll laugh. No, it was funny. Mm -hmm. It was funny. Castle's question mark. In, in this example, the bishop takes h5, h7 sacrifice is initially rather disguised, as the rook is hiding behind the bishop which, in addition, currently has no clear path to h7. Mm -hmm. But as you might have expected, e5, x climb. Yeah. Yeah, I would think that. Now the f6 knight has to move, after which everything is ready for the hammer blow on h7. Yeah, you can't take with the knight because it's pinned. And you can't take with the queen because then your knight lacks protection. So he has to move his knight. I wonder what the next move will be. <laughs> uh, he mentions queen takes e5, loses a piece, so black is forced to remove the defender. The alternative would be knight d5, which is no better. White still wins with bishop h7. Exclam. Well, not a moment. I mean, it, we could win material, but we gave up a piece, so... Okay, so knight f5. Rook takes, rook takes, e takes, e6. Black is defenseless. Yeah, that's mate and that's mate. Mm -hmm. No way you could stop both those moves. Pretty sure. <laughs> Pretty sure you can't stop them. <laughs> you can go here, X-Clan. Let's stop them both for one turn. Here. Yeah, one turn. <laughs> um... <laughs> Gentle yeah. fun, only gentle fun. We love Indo. Hey, yeah. what do you? So, what do you mean, PPRTS one? Are you getting a new job? Maybe you're retiring. Or retiring. Mm -hmm. One day away from retirement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can never tell how old any. Well, some mm -hmm. people you can tell. <laughs> some people, That's true. but then some people is another younger or way older than you would think. This allowing the queen and rook to slot into place on the h-file without loss of time. That's a British way of putting it, mm -hmm. to slot into place. Is that what, that's that's what he said, yeah. Several other white pieces are positioned to join the attack, like that. Also this and that. All of the pieces are getting ready. Mm -hmm. uh, so black's chances look extremely poor. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Never do this. After f5, we've already seen that. White wins analogously to the note, the previous note, you know, by tra trading an e6. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> f6. Knight 4, f3. He gives us this dubious. This is good enough for the win, but knight f knife f5 is even more crushing. Since queen takes e5, Still, e takes is e6, which mates, because it's trapping the king. So queen takes e5, knight h6. The idea is that if you take, I'll play queen check and rook takes mate. So king h7, just queen g4. Setting up more discovered attacks now that you, know, you couldn't trade queens out of that. There. Threatening the queen and mate. That's mate in one. Because it uncovered the bishop. Queen g5. Hanging the queen on purpose because the queen is already hanging and the mate was threatened. So here the material is three pieces for a queen. So we can't really stop analyzing here. Queen h5. The only way to defend this is rook f6. Yeah. Which blocks the bishop so then we can go boom shakalaka. It's mate in a few moves. Indeed, we'll trade the rook and then win on h6 and mate him with our three pieces. 
So knight f5 was x clam, but you have to actually find not only the idea of knight h6, which isn't very difficult, I would say. You could see knight h6 as a move because he can't take it. But then also, this is a subtle answer. Because like you could see this position and think, ah, I can't move my knight because then he trades queens, right? Mm -hmm. But a subtle response, setting up tactical threats and hanging the knight, but knight f3 is a double attack. That's tough to visualize that from you know, a few moves ago, yeah. I would say. So we can uh, forgive Smirin. I mean, that seems pretty cool, but yeah, hard to see. Definitely, definitely. I mean, he he, he would see it sometimes. Smirin's good. Yeah. <laughs> but he just this time he didn't see it. Because mm -hmm. also his move wins anyway. Knight 4, F3. Because now the threat is this move, which ends the game. If you, well, if you don't take it, it's mate. But if you do take it, it's also mate, because my rook controls F7. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So knight g5 is, is a huge threat. That's why Smirin played this move. You have to play f5. But then Smirin had an answer for this too. Knight e4 x clam. This neat move re renews the threat of playing knight to g5. You know, because otherwise, if knight g5 last turn, he just takes it with the bishop. But now he is going to play knight g5, and trading with the bishop's only a temporary solution. So black has to accept the sacrifice. However, opening up the f-file allows white to win black's queen. So Smirin just calculated this wins by force. That's why he played it. He went here and then double check. And then this check. Dubious. Queen h5 check is more accurate for reasons that we'll, we shall see later. He says shall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see what the deal is. I can't guess it yet. So we can't take the queen because of mate. So we'll take here first, I guess. Yes. Oh, I understand now. Bishop takes question mark. He should have played knight takes, frankly, obviously. And this is why the queen would have been better placed here, because then it wouldn't be attacked right now. Mm -hmm. um, which is what he says. Queen e8 check would have been the answer, though. Queen d8. Of course, you are going to lose the queen anyway, because it's check. So, like this. But now, king c7, you're in a pin. Objectively, this is still winning for white, but black can play on. I mean, this is going to be three pieces for a queen once I take your piece. What book are we reading, Cheesy Driver? It's by John Nunn, Understanding Chess Middle Games. We did another one, too. We did uh, The Complete End Games by Silman. We did that mm -hmm. entire book. We did do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is like unclear, but whites should be winning. Mm -hmm. Whereas with queen h5, if you played knight takes, just knight takes queen. Which is still three pieces for a queen, right? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it seems very similar. But okay, anyways, he played bishop takes. Queen e8 check. After this intermediary check, it's all over for black. Yeah, the e-pawn's also pretty good, huh? I would just take it. He did. He did take it. Why not? It's going to fork him anyway, so you might as well take it. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> what an, it's pretty alert. That you've noticed that. Um, Resigns. Wait. If he takes it... Is it some kind of... I'm glad you enjoyed, you enjoyed these books, Hiking Poet. It's just a, you know... Oh, scare, yeah. That's all. Oh, okay. Easy scare. So he gets three pieces for the queen. And he'll be up a whole rook. So, uh, resigns. What's funny is he wasn't threatening that. He was never threatening that. The guy played here, allowing it. Because he's threatening this. And so the guy's like, I'll counter threat. Which is, even that doesn't work because I can block. Mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then he noticed, oh, but you put everybody on dark square. So I'll take your dark square bishop and win all your pieces. Yeah. Oh, you like the book lessons? Yay, Hiking Poet. That was my idea. <laughs> Good game. Yeah, so that was a brilliant game by Smirin. 
First of all, he played normal in the opening. Then knight b1, I even like that. I like that. And then a3 was good. And then rook c3 was cool. e5 was just x slam. And bishop takes wins by force. And the only thing you can nitpick is that he had slightly easier wins. Like knight f5 is an easier win than what he did. But then still, knight e4 x clam? Yeah, and then queen g6 slightly imprecise because queen h5 was easier. I wouldn't really even understand that, but okay. So yeah, great game by Smear and just what you expect out of somebody who beats Kramnik and... Who was it? Was it Kramnik and Karpov in the same year? I think it was. Maybe it was. I think it was Kramnik and Karpov. So yeah, he's no joke, Smirin. Mm -hmm. Smirin is definitely one of the best players in the world. All right, I should unlock the door. Yeah. And you also have a thing to tell us. Oh yeah, it's See, not. Yeah, I remembered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you get back. All right. I mean, it's not. It's not going to be news to most people. So what are people saying? Um, we're going to keep doing some more of the nun. We're just taking a very tiny little break. We're unlocking the front door of the chess club because we're technically open right now as of seven minutes ago. Nobody out there? Nope. I mean, actually, I see Jill's car. Oh, you see Jill's <laughs> car. But she usually waits in her car. <laughs> she likes to do uh, uh, knitting. <laughs> uh, so I was just curious if you guys saw that um, Nicholas Dojan said he wasn't going to stream anymore. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Oh yeah, not he, that I know him very well. He but. had um, an announcement stream, and I saw it. And I was just curious if anybody saw it. Why not? Well, he said um, that it was hard. To, it was really difficult to hear him because the uh, audio. His stream usually sounds. Normal. I mean, he streamed for a while. His streams are great. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Dojan, you don't know who that is? DK knows. Well, he, you got, you guys can see the um, video on demand to see because it's it's about an hour long stream. But basically, I could you can't hear him real well because of the audio being um, messed up. It was extremely low, but you can hear it. But you have to turn it all the way up. But anyway, he said that um, he'd applied. I think this was two or three times. I can't remember now. Maybe this was his third time applying to be a partner at Twitch and he got rejected. Yeah, he is a very nice patron of chess. That's right. Um, I have I watched his stream less than I just noticed him on stream giving, but I have seen his stream, and his stream is very educational. Very nice man. Oh, no, Quinn. <laughs> So anyway, I was just curious if you'd heard about it. He was very, um, I guess, offended that Twitch didn't was, partner him, right? And he and he has okay, so he has less followers than I have on on the Karen ATL Chess Club stream. He has, but it's similar. It's a similar amount, but he, he gets more views than we get. Mm -hmm. He definitely gets way more views, mm -hmm. and I think part of that is because he's on Chess TV a lot. Right. He's pursued that more than. Um, I have. I haven't even tried to do that. But um, also because he has a lot of really great guests, like um, Nardisky and different ones giving him lessons. Mm -hmm. And so his stream was really good. Anyway, yeah, he was upset that they didn't, they tried to say that he didn't, had not met all the criteria. And I think their main complaint might have been viewer, average viewership, but I'm not sure. And then he showed us when within Twitch, his stats where he, he had like way more than what you need. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's all I have to say. But I was disappointed to hear. He said he's not even going to be on anybody's Twitch streams. Like he's oh, leaving he, Twitch. He left Twitch? Yeah, because he feels like Twitch is poorly run and mm -hmm. immature platform in a lot of ways. So it's sort of a statement against the platform. And he's going to, I think, just kind of stream maybe on YouTube. Yeah, I've always uh, I've Rage always thought quitting. that Twitch, you know, is for a, let's say a younger demographic <laughs> mm -hmm. than than I would like to generally converse with. Right. You know, usually the people on Twitch are. I mean, obviously, you know, there's all sorts of people on Twitch, but a lot of the viewers are teenagers. 
you know, a large portion of the viewers are teenagers. Mm -hmm, that's true. But there are a lot of older people than I ever even knew. Oh, totally. Um, but, yeah, there are a lot of young ones. I think that, um, yeah, I agree, DK, maybe he'll reconsider because we're talking about um, uh, Nicholas Stojan said mm -hmm. he was leaving Twitch. He was... There's weirdos on Twitch. Says MG weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He was just offended. I do. I did feel like that. Um, you know, he certainly had enough viewers to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, a partner, and they don't count. Yeah, they don't count in bad views. Right. So all the embed views I've gotten from being on Chess TV and when uh, front page of Twitch, none of that counts. Yeah. So. I like the uh, the tombstone. Uh, quote there. Well, hey. bye. Yeah. Oh, is that from that one? Oh, I didn't know that was from that Yeah, there's, it's a GIF. It's a oh. GIF, you know. It's the guy saying, well, bye. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Because I thought it was a funny way to express it. Now it makes sense. I was wondering about Goldust Tori, too. She's a full-time student right now, but I did notice that on Twitch, she took her, um, everything off, like her picture and everything off of her Twitch account, and there's only one video on demand, but I don't know. I didn't really know her that well. I think yeah. that she got disgruntled with chess.com, then they seemed to patch it up. The next thing I knew, she, she wants... She still didn't stream, right? Yeah, she didn't stream anymore. Maybe she, she streamed like once or twice after the patch up. Twice, I think. Then she's a full-time student, so who knows? How's it going, Bowler? I agree, Quinn. Yeah, they they seem to do things rather haphazardly. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Bowler. And hey, VCDJ88. Do you want to get started on this? this yeah. Thing? Let's go back to that. Happy right. happy 21st birthday. This portion of, or this section of the book is called Disaster on G7. Last time we were looking at sacrifices on H7. Oh, okay. For two sections, but this section's on G7. All right. This is Shengalia against Beletsky. I never heard of those people. Bundesliga from 2008 slash 9. This position is roughly equal. White's queen and bishop are both aimed at g7, but for the moment, black's kingside is sufficiently defended. And it is not easy for white to bring another piece into the attack. White also has to take care because, thanks to the, his advanced f-pawn, his own g2 square is not totally secure. And he can't go back to f3. Which, that might be a benefit, because never play f3. <laughs> and he's also got to watch out for, for example, some rookie 2 action. So, black plays d5. Oh, I knew I didn't make it black's turn when I said black plays. Black plays d5. While this is not in itself a mistake, it is the start of a risky plan. Black should first of all take steps to safeguard his kingside before he considers active play of his own. This could be most easily achieved by queen c7 to f7, guarding f6 and, and g7 while at the same time taking aim at the isolated pawn on c4. A sense of danger is important in chess. Even when there are no immediate threats to meet, it's often important to shore up fragile defenses as an insurance against future tactical mishaps. Mm -hmm. Interesting point. DC dubious. This allows white to bring his knight to a more active position free of charge. Queen d6 x-clam is better, defending f6 and activating the queen. Then further attacking attempts by white would rebound. For example, rook g3 dubious. Check. Rook c7 defending. And it's black rather than white who has attacking chances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would just would... Uh, would, would think that black's obviously better here, you know. Because you ain't going nowhere with that. Hmm. Yeah, happy belated, VCDJ88. <laughs> Almost 40, just a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Phoenix Shade. That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's pretty funny, Phoenix Shade. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> Thanks to the active position of white's knight, black now faces the threat of rook g3, queen c7 to protect, and then knight d6, overstretching the queen's defense. So he sacrificed the exchange, question mark. Black attempts to solve his problems tactically, but this move fails, 
it gives white a new opportunity to attack g7. By this stage, accurate defense is necessary, and black should play bishop a6. Queen d1. If, it seems like a kind of weird move to me, if rook g3, rook c7 is fine for black. So the point of bishop a6 is if you ever go in here trying to win material, I pinned you. So we'll just be trading material, mm -hmm. potentially. So queen d1 is the suggestion by none in this case. King h8, x clam. Wait a minute. Yes? Um, I'm confused. So go back. Okay, stop. Um... Oh, okay. Your birthday was the 21st, too. Also, my sister's birthday was the 21st. I don't know if people were... Somebody mentioned that because, you know, my dad talks about it. Oh, wait. So, wait. Why is the night... Uh, I'm not seeing this. Oh, the free night? Yeah. We'll just take it and fork. Um. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah, you got it. I didn't see the fork for a second. Fork town. All right. Oh, so queen d1, king h8. Uh, where is this variation? I got confused. Okay, queen c2. Protecting and threatening rook h3, which would win. Knight f8, x clam. Never get mate with knight on f8. White threats Peter out since never get mate with knight on f8. No, he didn't say that. Since he cannot easily re reorganize his forces due to the pressure on c4. So it's tough for you to move all around. You have to defend this. You would have right. to just play some defensive move, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. All right, but instead he played rook takes question mark. And so bishop a6 to win it back. Mm -hmm. Rook d4, x clam. This is the refutation. By giving up the f1 rook, white gains time to penetrate to d7 for a lateral attack on the sensitive g7 square. Mm, wow. Bishop e2, forked him, <laughs> instead of just taking the rook. Yeah, that's fine. I like it. Oops, obviously that was not played. Yeah, I think also Nicola brought some additional spon sponsors that probably mm -hmm. won't stick around. Sad. Mm -hmm. This was the point of driving the knight to, or the queen to g3, is that we could play knight g5 and then if you take it we trade queens which obviously black would love that since he's getting mated rook g7 x clam as so often with an attack on g7 the bishop on the long diagonal plays a key role king f8 if he took the rook this would transpose to what happens in the game so he goes here and now this threatens mate thereby Forcing black to take and then takes. This wins, but white could have forced mate in four. This. There. And then mate. The zig and the zag. The old zig and the zag. <laughs> what about uh, if we try to defend differently? I mean, any other move, we just take here a check. It's kind of weird that he wouldn't do that then. But probably he was calculating a lot of stuff. He's calculating all, like all these moves and then just didn't look at that one. By yeah. the time he saw Bishop by six was winning, he just didn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty pretty effective, I would say. Mm -hmm. Good game. <laughs> yeah. Why can't pawn takes queen? Because bishop pin? Yes. If black defends differently, he loses differently? Yes. No, I have your protect. Oh. <laughs> it's just rando stuff. All right, maybe one more? I don't yeah. know, actually. It's already, we only have 10 minutes. Um, I don't know. Did, can you finish it by 530? Well, I don't know. It'd be kind of tight. I'd rather not. Let's don't. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I get too anxious. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I agree. Let's don't rush it. Let's just wait. Yeah, Spencer has to leave in a minute. I mean, you can hang out for another minute. Yeah. I agree. Let's don't start another example. Okay, we're going to end the nun part of the stream, and then I think I can play people again. 
But Spencer won't be around to analyze, but, but probably for one game. And then I have to leave soon after, too, because I have to work. I'm so tired. I didn't really sleep very much last night. That's a pretty good Beatles song, too. I'm so tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that one. I should sing that one. And then I somehow want to go to karaoke, which is just dumb. We're reviewing the John Nunn book. Understanding um, Chess Middle Games. That's right. It's in the title of the stream, unless you're on, uh, <laughs> unless you're on mobile and you can't see it. <laughs> I'm Only Sleeping is also a good song. Yeah, I like that song. Yeah, that was... It's different that I'm so tired. <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, Those are different songs, but... Yeah. They're very similar. Whenever I hear one, I think of the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I never read the titles. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> All right, well, let me see. I've got one challenge. I'm going to go with go. it right now. Let me see who's texting me real quick. Hang on, sorry. Goo D uh, evening, Ben and Karen. Ben and Karen, come on. This is your first day here? Okay. Come on, Titan Lord. Wait, what's going on? <laughs> oh, Ben and Karen. Almost, Ben. <laughs> yeah, Ben is streaming later, by the way. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not right now. Uh, at eight, I think. Eight ish. Eight ish. <laughs> it's okay, Titan Lord. Just joking. It's funny. Aha. Uh -huh. You'll never play the London against me, <laughs> says Scottish Demon Goat. All right. A lot less sarcastic. Well, slightly less sarcastic. Still pretty sarcastic. I know, I know about that trick. dumb trap. Yeah, yeah. A little you trick. give me goat. I know about that stupid <laughs> trap. Please. Yeah, you must have learned it from Rosen, right? Been around the block. Now, a couple, of, <laughs> a couple of people did it, did it to me a couple of times. So I, I didn't learn it from Rosen. I should have. Oh, oh. Well, probably they learned it from Rosen. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but the trick is the pre-move. Yes. The trick is the pre-move. Mm, actually, Archer's done it to me before. Because then it seems like they made a pre-move error, right? Mm, yes. What do you guys really think of the London? Uh, I like it. You know, I think it's all right. It's Karen's favorite opening. So she obviously likes it. But I'd recommend it to anybody. Like, It's especially good for... It's a classical opening, so it's good for like under 2,000. The karaoke stylings. Hey, it's Chess with Ovi. Hey, Chess with Ovi. I only play the London on rainy days. <laughs> I wish I hadn't done this. In, in London spirit, I guess. Give me all this pawn's going to get targeted. Let me see. Ugh. Are you going to cry about it? <laughs> Who cares? Go on. Um, Who cares about that? Yeah, let me do this. You have a thousand ways of defending it. Mm -hmm. That's one. I typically play Queen's Gambit. You mean on Netflix you press play on Queen's Gambit? No, I, I like to play the Queen's Gambit too. Yeah. Anyways, I better get set up because okay. I only have five minutes. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, Bye, everyone. See yeah, you next Spencer time. has to leave. Hey, Chess with Ovi. Good luck in this game against the goat. Don't forget to play fast. Because um, you're already behind on time. Time. time yeah. Time. It's on my side. Perpetual issue. All right, guys. I can only be on here a little bit longer myself. But um, let's see what people are saying. Mm. Let's 
I'm so quiet. <laughs> hey, Squire. Yeah, I'm about a minute behind. So. Wait, what? I don't understand. Can I just take with the pollen? Mm. Yeah, I'm the slowest phoenix. <laughs> I've gotten a little faster because I've been just only doing um, mostly three minute, some five minute. Hey, how's it going? Somebody just came in the front door. <laughs> I think Spencer must be in the bathroom. His students here. Let's see. Now is the time to pick up the pace. Darn, it's so hard for me to go fast. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Let's see. Um, why is it really very fast? And I'm hanging a pawn here.
Yay, I won. <laughs> GG <laughs> goat. <laughs> All right, let's try to limp along without our chief. Um, hey, debugger to be. <laughs> I won. Without our chief analyzer here. All right, I'm not very good with the tools, but let's just see. Which button do I even click? I think it's this one. It makes it too big. I think if I close the game, maybe. Yeah. No. Sorry, I'm not very good with the tools. Oh, it's all blurry now, too. What happened? Hang on a second. Let me just fix the camera. Yay, I won. <laughs> Your stupid Rosen trap. Yeah, I mocked it too. I'm not a big mocker. Gentle mocking, gentle mocking. <laughs> I said like I haven't heard of that dumb trap. The right and I even knew uh Rosen. <laughs> Alright, wait. That didn't even fix it at all. Hang on, sorry. Aw, oh, thank you, Titan. I did notice that, well, I've been bitten by that trap more than once. So that's the way to really learn something is to um, have your butt kicked by it a couple of times. Okay, I think it's fixed now. Um, oh, you're leaving? What? Where are you going? You should play, You sh everyone should play Rosen's Traps. You're 82% against the Petrov thanks to his Stafford vids. Well, that is a pretty good uh, statement. Rosen's a great teacher. So I need to be looking at some of his um, London videos for sure, but I did know about the, the trap initially from him. Then people, and then my son plays the England Gambit on me. And so, I don't know, various people have gotten me with this dumb trap. <laughs> so finally I remembered it. Okay, so it still says it's whites up 1.2. Did you leave, Demon Goat? It sounded like you might be leaving. <coughs> or maybe you were saying bye to people that were leaving. <clears throat> I feel like I'm getting, getting the COVID here. <clears throat> Yeah, I wasn't sure about all that. Let me see. This I wasn't sure about. Yeah, it wanted me to take with F, which I did. I just felt like um, I was going to get in trouble, but then I didn't. Then you took, I took. Still pretty even. I mean, whites up a little, according to the engine. Well, it's up almost a pawn, yeah. Well, I am up a pawn. Okay, well, that makes sense. But positionally, the engine thinks it's similar, I guess. I don't think it's very good at rating it positionally. So white's up 1.11. Now it's a dead draw. Let me go back. Okay, so white's winning. That was not a good move. They want me to go D4. No, I can't go D4. Can't see crap. Oh, Rook D7. Uh, and then B5. And then Queen of 2. Okay. Anyway, White's still slightly winning. Then okay, that was no good. Why was that no good? So they're wanting you to go queen f two. No, you can't go queen f two. I can't see very well. Sorry. 
Oh, they're wanting me to go queen f2. Okay, it's my turn. So queen, okay, yeah, that that lines up on the f7. I think at this point we were in a pretty bad time scramble. Okay, so black is actually winning. Black's still winning. Okay, that was a bad move. That made it draw. They want king g7 here. I guess to, to protect from queen f8. Yes, yeah, so you had that defense, but you didn't see it. We were... But even now there's a defense. Let's see, queen e3. Yeah, yeah, because you have to get off. But she went here. Oh, yeah, you went queen e3 check. Rook e7. Yeah, so I guess if you'd gone rook e7, then you still would have been winning. Why does rook e7 rook f1? Let me just see. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, and then rook f1. So I can't go here anymore. Let's see here. Um, oh yeah, because you can block um, my rook. Okay. All right, well that's as far as I'm gonna look at the game. Let me see what time it is. I'm so happy I won. <laughs> Yay, a rare victory over the demon goat. I think, how many times have I beat you, demon goat? Maybe once before. And maybe drew you. I can't remember. But um, GG, that was fun. So we have, let's see, 110 viewers. Oh, the goat went to go eat. Yeah, he said bye. Um, so let me see. How about I'm going to play one more game, and then we got to end because I have to work. The chess club's open, and I'm, just, I'm risking it. And I'm going to take... Cheesy driver, you are actually next. So yay. <laughs> and let me get rid of this. Are you still there, cheesy driver? Because we got one going. Okay, good. All right, this is going to be the last game of the stream. Probably not going to analyze it or anything since... I'm so terrible with the tools. I'm getting a little better with the tools. But um, we'll have fun here. We'll play our game. Find somebody to raid. Etc. <laughs> In fact, I'm already looking to see who I'm going to raid. Hmm. Kind of slim pickings right now. Yeah, thank you guys for the stream. <laughs> thank you for coming and participating, etc. Um, something here. Who am I going to raid? Not that it's hugely important, but I like to raid somebody. It's kind of fun. I've got somebody in mind. Hopefully, he's fixed his audio by now. <laughs> His audio was, he had, it clearly has output levels up too high, the person that we're going to raid. And I told him, but he said he didn't have confidence he could figure out how to fix it. So it had like a little bit of a buzz. Every time he would talk, it was like, bzz, bzz, bzz. like just, I'm very sensitive to um, sounds. Darn, I forgot about that. I can go here, then I'll lose a pawn. Uh, go here. Maybe that's all right. 
Mm. There's a hint. <laughs> oh, thank you, Titan. Thank you for loving the stream. Somebody's got to love it. <laughs> there is a hint. There's a hint. The person that we're going to raid is, uh, you know, probably the highest rated online right now. But he's he needs to fix his um, audio. But he'll get there. He's got to figure out how to do it. He's new to streaming. Yeah, I like the London a lot, Titan. Also, I, I, I know Queen's Gambit a little. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Quinn. If I don't see you guys, I hope... Um, I hope everybody has a good holiday. Which way? All right, last game of the stream, as I was saying. I'm sorry I'm so quiet when I'm playing. You know, trying to, trying to play some better chess here. <laughs> what can I say? Feels like there's some kind of tactic here, but... Uh, I'm not sure. Knight's hanging, my pawn's hanging, everything's hanging. Uh, uh, and I'm out of time. All right, well. Darms hanging pieces left and right. Ugh. I have no time. All right. Well, GG. Sorry that I I was so slow. You were winning anyway, but I had hoped to um, do better with my time management. But alas, <laughs> not this game. Yeah. Thank you, cheesy driver. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna raid now, and I'm not gonna delay our raid. We're gonna. This guy has a great stream, upbeat personality. Great music, buzzy audio, unless he fixed it. So you got to forgive him that he's new, okay, and he's high ranked. <laughs> but see you guys. Come back and see Ben's stream now at 8 o'clock or so. Bye.